Welcome to Hybrid Hangar, where we explore flight and racing sims and the hardware that brings them to life. My name's Mike, and today we're going to modify an aluminum extrusion rig to mount a PC chassis behind a monitor. In addition to the aluminum profile, the tools and materials that we'll be using for this project include a miter saw, 3D printer, as well as software like Fusion 360 and Prusa Slicer. Let's get started. The stand is originally from a company called Rig Metal, and the profile that we'll be using for it is from AliExpress. Both are 40 series and otherwise match, but matching 40 series profile can sometimes be difficult, which I'll cover later in the video. Later we'll be putting this all into CAD and then making custom cuts of profile for this project. But I should point out that you can typically order profile pre-cut to size. CAD is also a little overkill for this project, but I thought it would be useful as a simple project to demonstrate the concept. This is the computer case that we'll be modifying the stand for. It's a fractal torrent compact, and the first thing that we'll do is use Fusion 360 to approximate and conceptualize how this case is going to fit with the profile. So we have this problem where we're trying to build a stand for the computer. What I like to do with these kinds of problems, pretty much anything where I'm trying to build a, a functional part of something, I like to model all of it, both the pieces that I'm gonna make and the pieces that are going to either, in this case, sit on top of it. This is the computer right here. So this is just a very simple model with feet to act as markers so that I knew where the profile had to land. The way that it's gonna work is that this is the front of the computer where all the air intake is. These are the feet and the little arms are gonna go under here. Now one really big trick here is this awesome site called GrabCAD. You wanna click on library up here and you can search for what you're trying to find. So in this particular case, we're using aluminum profile. This is not like what I have. My sim rig over here, I bought from Sim Lab, and it was made with profile that looks like this. Now note how thick that is. This is the stuff that I tend to buy from AliExpress. You'll see that's quite a bit thinner, and I'll put them side by side here. They're compatible, sort of. The T-nuts can be different, but they can bolt together as long as you use the native T-nut type. But if you're trying to build a 3D part that has to conform to how these are designed, then it matters. Let's just look for 40-40 pieces. This is much better. So if you look at that pattern, we know that the width is right, but if you'll see that design, they match. Because of the way that 40 series profile works, if we take two 40s, that essentially makes an 80. We just have to make sure that in CAD that they are lined up. So we're gonna put the profile underneath. I just have to drag and drop that here. Let's look at the bottom and rotate this. Check, create a copy. And then, there we go. Then we wanna move these guys up here. Then we want to extrude these. So you select the two faces and you extrude it out. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. We're just messing around here with the profile to get a rough idea of how long we want the profile to be before we go and cut it, because pretty much any length between the 190 and the 160 is pretty good. All right, so the idea here is that we want the blade to hit just on this side of that tape. That's where 20 centimeters is, right about there. One twenty centimeter piece of profile. All right, so there we have it. Here's our two. 20 centimeter pieces, they match perfectly. And we gotta take off some tape. We were using to guide it. 
These are gonna get stuck on like here. This part right here, kind of hard to see. It's a little bit raised. And so that's where we're gonna bring in the 3D printer that. And we don't really want the computer to rest straight onto this profile. It would probably be fine, but at the same time, I don't want the rubber feet to get worn out by this shape here. We're gonna overdo it, use the 3D printer. That's what it's for, it's for that kind of fun stuff. Um, but first we need to get these on here and make sure that they're lined up right. Okay, so for those of you who aren't familiar with aluminum profile, the way it works is that there are these nuts that are called T-nuts, and this goes into that channel. And then you have these other devices. In this case, this is called a corner bracket. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put this into the channel, and then we're going to attach another T-nut to the channel in this main piece here. And then with that, we're gonna be able to securely attach the two pieces to a point where you can actually put a heavy computer on here. Um, and that's that's the plan I think I'm gonna use a different corner bracket so that these don't have guides in them I have other corner brackets that do have guides all right so I found my other corner brackets as you can see these have a channel guide on them that keeps them straight on the profile these are gonna go on the side I have the ones without guides that I'm gonna put on the bottom and that that way there's gonna be oh man yeah it's probably overdoing it <laughs> but um, I'm gonna put two on the bottom, two on the sides. So that's gonna be four bolt points where this will attach to the larger piece of profile. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the T-nuts. This is a special kind of leaf spring T-nut. You typically need these with this style of channel. This profile, it's a lot thicker than this profile. It uses a different kind of T-nut, which has a little ball. This kind of T-nut I find is a lot easier to work with. I like the SimLab style profile better. I tend to buy the cheaper stuff. I deal with the leaf T-nuts that are harder to move and it's mostly fine. All right, so like I said, we're gonna put two on the bottom, two on the sides. So put this T-nut in here like so. It sits in there pretty well. The point of the leaf spring is just to hold it in place. There are some T-nuts that you can get that have no way to hold it in place. And those are those are fine too. Like once you get the bolt in there, it really doesn't matter. But it is nice to not have them constantly sliding out. We're gonna put our corner brackets that are made of zinc and have the tabs broken off. We're gonna put these on the bottom. This guy's gonna go like so. So that's just kind of finger tight. These silver ones that are made of zinc um, on the bottom because the channel is gonna be perpendicular to where the tabs were. Definitely overkill, but it's going to work, which is the important part I like to overdo things instead of under all right so now we need to do the other one pull this monitor off and this piece is held on by four brackets like so mount everything to this crossbar first and then put it all back onto the frame all right so here we have our profile it has this kind of shape I've moved these mount points um, a bit so that they line up with this new shape. It's not like you have to drill new holes. And these are all mostly flush with the end of the profile. And again, you just really want these finger tight. We're gonna lock them down later. All right, now we're gonna do the second piece. All right, so now we wanna measure them and not even close. So we gotta scoot them in a bit. Oh, that's very close. Just a little too close together now. Scoot this guy back a little bit. And again, that's what's really cool about profile. You can adjust it to be exactly the way you want it to be. So that's like right on the money right there. 40 centimeters. I'll lock down the bottom ones. Kind of want to pull out the bolt to the very end if you can to maximize the surface area of where the bolt is pressuring the the profile and the bracket down the short end that's all of them oh that's solid zero flex there i think that's gonna work really well we are gonna continue making this platform that I already started. And the point of this is to add a bit of cushion, I guess, to the computer that's gonna sit on top so it doesn't have to sit on top of these channels. Let's make a new component, call it protector two. Two centimeters above, that's 20 millimeters. And then I wanna build out this shape. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is which way it's gonna print. And you want it to print in a way that you don't have to have supports 
because supports are a pain. They're getting easier with organic supports or tree support, but if you can just have it flat, then that's a big win. So the way that this is actually gonna print is on the build plate, this is gonna be the bottom up here, even though it's the top for, uh, for the piece. It's gonna be the bottom on the build plate. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to contour to the shape. We have that 20 millimeter line, build a line up there that's perpendicular, line up there. I should stress, I'm not an expert. This is just how I've managed to muddle my way through uh, through a process. So right now we're we're drawing on top of this piece of profile, this face of it, but uh, which gets us anchors on the model that we can use as reference points for our lines. Again, you can eyeball this kind of stuff, but you don't want to. It's not worth it. We have to project this other piece onto this reference drawing. So you hit the P key, you hit project. Now we have all of these points that we can use as well, which is great. So we draw a line here and then we have our piece. Now here's one problem. Again, we want to ignore this because this little gap here, this little V gap doesn't exist on our piece. So we want to draw a line there and there we go. There's that piece, you just hold control and that looks like what we want. Now, I forgot one thing. So I want it to lock in. I want to slide it in on the side and then make it impossible for it to pull off. Okay, so this is a case where we want a mirror. I'll explain why in a bit, but we're gonna to wanna to essentially cut this thing in half. Let's open up the sketch again, because it closed. Draw a piece that looks like this. Maybe make that go down four millimeters. Connect them like this. Nope, we definitely want a lot more meat onto it. That, I think that's what I originally had thought I was gonna do. Okay, all right, so now we have this tab here. We have our pieces, and this is half of it again. All right, so at this point, I really just wanna build a test piece. Let's extrude that with the E key. Okay, and then say, okay, cool. We have to hide our pieces of aluminum. Now, one thing that's gonna be a problem is this is gonna be too tight because it's like, it's perfectly fit. So I can split the part. Maybe there's a way to do that without splitting the part, but that's what I'm gonna do. So split body, select the body, then you select the splitting plane, which I just made. There we go. All right, so that's gonna cut that. Like so, which makes this a different piece. Let's also make sure we get this side. Keep on forgetting to do that. All right, so we got that piece selected. This, 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 this. Okay, let's see what happens if we offset face. Make a point one, point two. Ah, that's perfect. Let's see what happens with negative point two. Okay, cool. I want to mirror, create a mirror. Where are you mirror? There you are. That object, this plane, nope. I want all of it. So I need to rejoin these guys. Combine this, this, and this mirror plane. There we go. Join. This looks like a good test piece. All right, so let's print this. Save as mesh and save this as, um, open a Prusa slicer. We need to choose the best side to print on. That would be that flat piece. We have PLA and the infill, we're gonna go real low, 5%, because this is just a test piece. Support material or infill, let's go with honeycomb. Let's see what that's gonna look like. Slice it. So it's gonna be mostly hollow, but that's gonna be really strong. The main thing that we wanna test is that we have enough of a tolerance gap for these pieces to slide in and that also that it's not too much where it can wiggle around. Yeah, let's see how this does. There we go. <clears throat> we want it to be snug, but we don't want it to be too snug to the point where we can't get it down there. And so, yeah, crap. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I can hammer it in there, but once I print something that's full length, that's gonna be a lot of friction to overcome. Um, and yeah, I, I don't, I don't wanna fight that. So, we're gonna go back into CAD, add a little bit more of a gap there. A 
and see how this guy does. Oh, that's much better. So that's in there nice and snug. And yet I can get it on there, which is the important part. So we're back to Fusion 360 and we need to make this longer. The profile is about 20 centimeters. So it's 200 millimeters. Extend that out to that point. We also want this to extend over the next piece of profile. And that's not gonna go in the channel. So we're, we're gonna go 40 more because it's 40 series. So what we can do here is we can split the body by that plane. And now these turn into a bunch of different bodies. And then we're going to extend this guy by 40. Cool, that's exactly what we want. Throw V1 down on there. Oh wow, it's gonna take up a big chunk of the build plate. So if you're shopping for a 3D printer, this is a case where build plate size really matters. We've been using infill 5%. I wanna bump that up to 20% since the computer is gonna be sitting on this thing. And then as you'll see here, the, the honeycomb pattern's gotten a lot more dense. That should be enough to hold up the computer though. Although, one thing that I'm actually gonna change, see how these edges are kind of sharp? It should work fine, but you can actually make it a little bit more durable if you soften those edges. Let's do that. That and it's gonna be easier to put on. That's what the fillet tool is for. Select all of them, fill it. I don't know, let's try one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, okay. So that's just gonna make it a little bit smoother. You're not gonna have as hard of an edge. Let's make sure to do the other side too. Fill it. Cool. That's a better part. Okay. Let's export that. V2. Let's see how that looks in the slicer. Oh yeah. That's much better. Still fits. Let's slice it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Send this one down. This attempt actually failed. That is the problem right there. Sometimes when you have a very large surface area, you can get warping. I know some tricks to mitigate this, but this print's kind of ruined. So we're gonna have to try again. The bed temperature, I think we're gonna bump that up by 10 degrees, five degrees for other layers. Let's see if that helps. Actually, let's just do 70 and 70, see how that does. And the other thing I was gonna try is the skirt. So right now the skirt height is three layers. Let's make it 30. So when we do that, we're gonna get a much bigger skirt. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna trap warm air in that area, which is going to make it so that the layers right above the bottom layer don't cool too quickly. And then you get a warped corner. Yeah, let's try that. I'm putting on this neoprene padding, which I got from Amazon. Got a little bag of it. And they come in these squares. It fits on like that. Of course, it's not a perfect fit. Now I'm gonna do this side. Using the side of the profile here as a guide. Trim the rough parts off. There we go, that fits. Cool. That looks pretty nice. So we just need to cover these two pieces here and then we're done. So there you have it. This was a bit of a fun project because uh, I wasn't sure who's was gonna work. We took some aluminum profile, we cut it down to what we needed, and then we used some 3D printed parts that were custom designed to make it all work a bit better. And I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how well it turned out. That computer isn't light. I, I'm not too worried about the kids knocking this down. We got some RGB going, like way too much. It would drive me crazy, but they're gonna love it. I guess this is the part where I'm supposed to say like and subscribe. But yeah, hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.